Welcome back everyone and let's continue. So uh, today we're going to talk about customizing ZBrush uh, UI, customizing your own hotkeys and creating a custom menu. So uh, we're going to start with hotkeys and in ZBrush you can create a hotkey basically for any function or operation that you see here on the screen. That can be also here a complete let's say uh, menu. So if we have here a tool menu you can also hover your mouse over that so anything really here you desire you can simply hover over so let's say perspective mode right here and simply go to control alt click on it and you're going to see the top left is going to say press any key combination to assign a custom hotkey in that sense you simply now need to press any key combination in my case this is control 2 and then now this is going to be your hotkey so this is basically how you assign a hotkey for absolutely everything here so the same thing is going to be let's say if you want to bevel crease, divide, just uh, control, alt, click, anything you want. And then, uh, for example, another one is going to be, let's say, solo mode. So control, alt, click on solo mode, control one, and now control one is going to be my hotkey for uh, solo mode. All right, so uh, let's now talk about uh, custom menus. So in order, actually, before custom menus, let's talk about customizing the interface itself. So for example, let's say that you would like to have uh, some of the brushes that you use most often, let's say here on the top or here on the bottom, uh, you can do that by going to preferences, config, and then enable customize. So once you have enable customize, it's going to be the same thing as with hotkeys. So control alt, and then simply drag any operation you would like anywhere you like, you would like to have it on, on a, here, kind of like either on the top or here, let's say on the bottom if you need more space so you can also drop it here at the bottom if that is what you like and just continue dragging kind of like parts of the features so in case you don't want to go into this menus here you always have them either top or on the side or whatever that uh, that may be so again it's just going to be as simple as so for example if you want to brush this uh, brush simply need to undock this but this little button on the left and then from here you can choose let's say some of the brushes and push them aside if the brush is not here you can also just quickly activate it and then from here you can just drag it again where you would like to have those if you are not satisfied with this if you would like to start over you can go to preferences enable customize disable that and then simply restore standard ui and then you can start again from the beginning if that is simply what you didn't uh, didn't like. Uh, all right, so let's now talk about custom menus. So custom menus are going to be similar in the sense that we go to config, enable customize, and then custom UI. So here we can create a new menu. menu. So just so let's say uh, menu, I don't know. And then that menu is going to appear right here. So you're going to see it right here. It's going to be empty. So good thing would be to kind of like undock it and just kind of push it here, let's say to the side let me just open the side and close this one take the menu and put it here on the side so it's currently empty um, which simply means that now we can kind of continue doing the same process what we did before so again control alt click and drag so just click and drag whatever you would like to uh, have so let's say duplicate delete and you can also go here on the preferences and take one of these select so like separators and kind of like create simply empty spaces uh, below so that you have let's say more kind of like uh, organized menus like this and then let's say i don't know split split to similar parts so these are going to be kind of like the tools uh, you would like to kind of like use or you like to use most often so let's say geometry it's going to be kind of like I don't know, divide. And then we're going to take, let's say, creasing on the side and crease all. So again, I'm just using control, alt, click and drag. And then again comes to preferences. We can take this little separator, put it here. And let's take one more and put it here down at the bottom. And that is all. So once you're done, you simply need to go back to preferences uh and going to be under config enable customize now turned off and just store config and that simply means that now each time when you load zbrush this is going to be the kind of like ui that's going to load in now since you have your custom menu made it's also a good thing to assign a hotkey for that so again you're going to just control alt click on it 
and assign, I don't know, Alt X. And so each time now you press Alt X, it's gonna pop up on your screen right here. So again, you don't need to search for those features. Here, you're always gonna have them on top of your kind of like uh, pen. Uh, also cool feature of ZBrush is if you press tab, you're gonna work in a full screen. So again, if you have, let's say, all of your important things kind of like on a hotkey, Control X, let's say, um, then again, you kind of like save some of that screen space. Uh, all right, so let's now talk about colors a little bit. So colors, this is something that we covered in a previous uh, video. So here, if you go under uh, document, here where it says back, you can simply click and drag and choose, let's say, which color you would like to have as a background. Um, same thing is going to be here for the border and for second border. So this is kind of like the general color setup for the background. Additionally, if you go to preferences, eye colors, uh, here you're gonna have plenty of more options how you can customize. So even the icons here, so you can, if you don't like this color, you can change that as well. And it's going to work similar. For example, if you would like to, let's say, um, change the opacity, let's say of these menus, so you can see here that the opacity is changing. If that is, I don't know, too high or whatever, you can play around that and kind of like customize really everything, everything to your liking. Uh, finally, let's just also touch quickly on materials. So here you have a lot of materials. And if let's say you would like to create your own material that also starts up each time with ZBrush as well, uh, you simply need to go to material, modifiers, and here, for example, what I like to do is just turn the ambient off, diffuse slightly off and increase slightly a little bit specular, not too much though. So kind of like middle, let's say 0 0.2 and 0 0.35, something like that, 0 0.2 and 0.3. And this is going to be enough. So it's going to be also maybe a good idea to so like try it out with different brushes. So for example, if you would use H polish, uh, especially when talking about a uh, hard surface that once you're using, let's say these type of brushes that you see really nice highlight on those corners. So that is going to be kind of like really important to have a good material that represents and uh, that represents hard surface workflow where we see those edges a little bit more, uh, let's say cleaner or a little bit more defined than by default. Uh, also just one small note, which is regarding the lighting. So if you go under render, preview shadows. Uh, this is something usually I like to leave on a default. Just be aware if you turn deep shadow on, uh, sometimes what may happen is that we see, let me just quickly do here something, uh, that you may see, let's say ridges or panel openings that they might appear deeper as they actually are. So let's say if you wanna, I don't know, this may this export and render, you might actually notice, okay, so my panel breaks are not as deep as I wanted them to be. So just make sure the deep shadow or uh, object shadow is not all the way, all the way up. So point three, I just leave it on default. And also uh, preview, ambient occlusion, I just turned that on. So this is kind of like what I have on and this is by everything by default. So just kind of like small note, uh, small note about that. And again, yeah, once you're done with all of the adjustments, you simply need to go to preferences, uh, config, and then you're gonna store config and save UI. So if you want to save that UI, so whenever you, let's say, move to different uh, workstation, you can take uh, the UI and hotkeys with you. Same thing with the hotkeys. If you want to store the hotkeys, save the hotkeys, uh, you can do that here. Uh, interface, one small note, is also interface buttons you can change too. I have them on 46. Uh, I would not go lower than 44. You're gonna see that it, start to, it may start to look a little bit uh, weird. But also if you want to change the button sizes and all that, you can also change that here. But yeah, more or less, these are kind of like the general the general changes that I did. And I can also show you, so config, restore custom UI. This is kind of like my UI um, with my color settings. And these are so like the custom menu that I use. This is uh, one of the custom menus and this is the second. So I just have these two. So I have control E, or actually uh, alt E and alt D. These are going to be my two custom menus. And the third one is control, actually Alt W to call the tool menu right here. So because when I'm working, let's say in a full screen, I can still call uh, this menu right here, uh, right in the middle of my screen. And I don't need to go here on the right side because it's always kind of like, um, I don't know, it's just more convenient having it immediately where my hand is. So it's kind of like mainly for that, for that reason. And yeah, that is all for this video. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.